about to get started here and on the hill today Kevin Gossman but Chris he hasn't exactly been stellar here on his home mound. Well I'll say this every player wants to perform well at their home ballpark in front of their fans in front of the city and you know this guy no different he wants to be more effective here so you know you look at the numbers they haven't been great at home I'm sure he wants to turn that around and we'll see if he's able to start that in this one Taylor Ward stands in now and watches strike one. And now the 0 1. Ball. 1 and 1. Popped up right side. Jimenez makes the grab one away. All right, let's take a look at the Angels lineup. And Chris, this group has been struggling to put up runs lately. Well, they haven't been on base a ton, and even when they are, they haven't been hitting very well with the runners on base. So they need a player or two to really step up, have some quality at bats, hit according to the situation, and sort of break out of this. I think if they do, the rest of this lineup will follow. Zach Neto at the plate now. That's ball one. One down, base is empty. And that one fouled off. Hey. Swing and a miss. Two. Slider right there. One ball, two strikes. One out, base is empty. And a pop up right side foul territory. Horowitz makes the grab for the second out. That is third. The second, the second baseman. baseman. Nolan. Nolan. And now the rookie Shonuel. second baseman, Nolan Shanwell. And first offering is fouled off. There's a strike, 95 of that one. Next offering upstairs. 0 2 fastball way out of the zone. I think he's trying to speed him up. Got to stay back. Off speed's probably coming. Bows that off to the left, and we'll do it again. Ripped to third, but handled, and that'll end the inning. Angels go quietly there, and now the Blue Jays will get their initial shot. No score. Back after this on the show. Back now in Toronto. And on the hill in this one, Johnny Cueto. And Chris, pitching on the road has not been particularly kind to him. Yeah, and you don't want to be too quick to say that he can't pitch on the road. Sometimes, you know, it's just a matter of luck. It's not having a feel. Difference between the bullpen mound to the mound out there on the playing field. I don't know what it is, but I know this. He's got good enough stuff to overcome and get it done on the road as well as at home. So we'll see what he's able to do in this one. And here it comes. And that one fouled off. Righty delivers. Ah. Struck him out swinging. Couldn't catch up to the heater. Oh, nothing too fancy on the strikeout pitch right there. Just a low 90s fastball, and I'm not sure he was trying to challenge him, but that's pretty much what happened. Very hittable location. We found a way to just get it by him. And now it's Dalton Varsho. Strike one. All one's the count.
The wind of the pitch. Swing and he breaks his bat. And it goes just foul. Kicks and fires. And that's off the inside edge. And the count one and two. The punch out there. Two away down. Well, anytime you can punch out the top two guys in a lineup to start an inning, you're going to be feeling pretty good out there on the mound because when you think of just having a distraction, table setters on the base paths, and all of a sudden you're dealing with the number three hitter, any distraction can cause you to serve up a cookie, and instead of it being a solo shot, it's a two or three run homer. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. now out towards left center. Moniak makes a nice run of catch. Scoreless after one. All set for the start of the inning. Here's Anthony Rendon up to the plate. The pitch. Fouled off. He was late, Gosman. In his 10th season, he features a four-seam fastball, a splitter, a slider, and he works in a sinker. Ball. Just missed. Patrick Johnson calling the balls and strikes. Pretty standard zone for Johnson. Sometimes he might get a little jumpy, a little excited and expand the zone, but usually you at least feel like the pitcher on the mound is earning it, and that's important because you got to make players earn it. That clips the inside corner for a strike. Singing what kind of strike zone is most frustrating for hitters? I'd say off the plate, away, and down. And why those are the toughest locations to hit the baseball. Stays alive. As the game has moved along, we see more and more information supplied by teams about the umpires. I've been in clubhouses where they have pictures of all four umpires, nicknames, hometowns, and as well, hobbies listed, just so you can kind of small talk the umpire a little bit. <laughs> That's great. Logan O'Hoppy in the box now. No balls in a strike. Swing and a miss. And a count is 0 2. No score here in the second. That one misses in the dirt. In the air, out towards left center. Varsho calls it in, and there's two away. The first base is Nico. Two outs, base is empty. And yeah, the batter now, Nico Cavadas, trying to pick up his first knock in the big leagues. Well, and that's, that's off the, the inside edge. And yeah, that's ball one. Wouldn't that's chase that time. Two out spaces empty. Ripped on the ground a second. Whips it to first. Out number three. So they make short work of them there. We go to the bottom of inning number two. We're tied. Nothing, nothing. Bottom of the inning, Leading and now for the Jays, Spencer Horowitz. Quito oh, back to work. And there's a strike. Broken bat, and it's popped up. He's got it, and there's one down. Batting good. Not shortstop. Ernie, Ernie Clement next up for the Blue Jays.
First pitch just misses. And that one is inside. On the ground. And that chance handled. Slings the first. And a couple of quick outs. Played that ball perfectly and got the throw off across his body as well as anybody could have. Any slower. And that was probably a hit. Next for Toronto, Leo Jimenez. Ground ball, left side. Throws across the diamond, and it's a 1-2-3 inning. Nothing doing for the Blue Jays. We'll move to the third with no score. And welcome Here back to the ballpark. Here's Joe Adele. Number seven. Joe Adele. Adele. Yeah, the right hater back to work. Hey. That clips the corner. Hey. Chase Lang, did he go? Yes, he did. Okay with the count. Just blown away in that at bat. Three fastballs, all strikes. He wasn't even able to foul one off. There's not much you can take away from an at bat like that as a hitter, other than maybe there's something wrong with your eyes. Got to have better timing on the fastball next time. Mickey Monia, the next to hit for the Angels. I'm liking what I've seen from him at the dish lately. Batting over 300 so far this month. And immediately pumps in a strike to the left-handed hitter. Top of the third, no score. And a foul ball. Sneaks through that one, it's a strikeout. Well, Boog, I'll tell you, when he goes to look at the video of that pitch, he's going to want to punch himself. That slider had hit me ridden all over it, and clearly he just got a little too excited and was out in front. Tell you what, when you get a pitch like that, you cannot miss it. Those have a chance to go a long way. Brandon Drury to the plate. And a foul ball. Two down, nobody on. I got a ball, one strike. Swings through that. One ball, two strikes. Hey. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Angels retired. One, two, three. Impeccable command in that one. Three batters, three strikeouts. That's electric stuff out there on the mound. Back here at Rogers Center as we go to the last of the third. Now it's the right fielder, Addison Barker. As he turns on the rubber, and with that good live arm delivers. That one fouled off. There's a strike. Two. And the right hander deals. And that one hammered Ward going back on this one. 
And it's caught just in front of the wall. Outstanding that catch right good. there. And I no love the commitment that he showed. Yeah. He knew that the wall was close, no, but was determined to make that catch. And a nice calculation of just how much room he had to try to minimize that contact. Number 36 stands in here, takes ball one low. And that one's a little bit low, and it's 2-0. Oh. One down, base is empty. On the ground to the left. Tosses the first, out number two. Batting number, the catch hit. Brian Servin next up for the Blue Jays. And Chris, his big strength is defense. But it is interesting, in today's world of baseball, compared to when you played, a good defensive catcher is considered differently. Well, Whatever you get offensively is a bonus. But he's got to put the fingers down. He's got to present pitches to the umpire. They're going to help his pitcher get more strikes. I think the other component is putting down the finger that the pitcher wants to throw and being on the same page and that's something that this oh, guy does that. really well gets in sync with his pitchers and a pinch yeah. got him looking that's a strikeout down in order go the Blue Jays and we are still scoreless. Out of the fourth, and here is Taylor Ward. Taylor. His preparation is off the charts. I was down in the clubhouse today trying to find him just to pick his brain a little bit. He's so buried in that video room, it's hard to get a chance to talk to him. Just nope. missed. Oh, and another good. ball. You got two balls, one strike. Swing, and that ball smashed on a line. He calls it in, and there's one away. Up next to the angel. The good one. Zach Neto, the no, next no. to hit for the Angels. 0 for 1 so far. Inside corner, and that's called a strike. He's been very consistent with his command out there on the mound, consistently throwing at the knees. Pretty impressive when a guy can repeat his delivery like this. Now he catches the zone, and it's 0-2. Quickly into an 0-2 count. Both pitches were down in the zone. I think you set your sights a little bit higher because you'll have a tendency to chase if you look down in that area. Well, there's a three-pitch strikeout. He can do whatever he wants with the baseball right there. Nolan Shonowell, the next to hit for the Angels. He's 0-1. And there's a ball. Swing and a high fly ball out there towards left field. And that'll do it. On to the bottom of the fourth now. Still with no score. And we're back. Leading Stepping off. in, the George game. Springer. The Springer Springer plays an important role for this team in the clubhouse, Boog. I mean, he can hit home runs, which is great, but he also brings a lot to the club away from the field, too. First pitch, and he just misses. Strike one. One and one. Here comes a pitch. Fall off foul. The pitch. Got it! 
Hicks, and he can't hang on. Not in time. Great effort, but it's an infield hit. Well, from the time you're a little leaguer, you're taught to hustle so on your box and get a full sprint through the base, regardless of how you hit it. And he didn't make great contact, but the effort was there, and he earns the base hit. Here's the center fielder, Dalton Varsho. He struck out swinging at his first at bat. Right through there for a strike. Springer on the run. Springer on at first. Nobody out. Next oh, offering upstairs. With two strikes, may see some movement over there at first base, trying to stay out of the double play right here. Wouldn't That's chase that two. time. <laughs> Two two now. Gets a piece there. We'll do it again. Ground ball right side could be two. Off balance feed. There's one. Not in time at first. It's a fielder's choice. Now back the third baseman. Vladimir. Here's Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Scoreless here, but now he's got to deal with a guy who's got some power. Got to be careful when you're talking about a hitter with this type of slug and these type of home run totals. That one finds the zone. Oh, one. One. That's a great take right there. Even though it's a strike, with the situation, runner on first base, you want to keep the ball off the Runner on the go. Pitch in for a strike. Throw there. Safe. Good steal a second right there. And now the table is set for the middle of this order to drive in the first part of this ball game. I like that they're trying to manufacture some offense early on. struck him out. Well, when you throw the same pitch back to back, that's how you want to do it. Set him up in the strike zone. Then extend a little bit from there and see if you can get him to chase. Nicely done with the slider right there. So digging in, Spencer Horowitz. First time up was a pop out. Here's the strike up high, and it's 0 and 1. Runner at second, two down. We're here in the bottom of the fourth. That misses, and that is ball one. One ball, one strike. And on second, two down. Foul back our way, and that's out of play. And a pitch. That misses the zone. The count now two and two. That's out to center field. Brings it in. And that's the inning. One left for Toronto. Still no score. Ready now for the fifth Ready inning. Down. So now the Angel cleanup hitter, Anthony Rendon. Anthony Rendon. The right hander back to work. Hey. That one's in there. 
That's strike one. Oh, well, he's been incredibly efficient in this one. First pitch strike percentage over 70%. That's well above league average, and that's what's allowed him to pitch well up until this point. And a base hit right there. So, a runner aboard to start the inning. Now, that Logan. Here's the Angels catcher, oh, Logan O'Hoppy. 0 for 1 with a fly out to center. Right through there for a strike. He's been known to jump all over the first pitch, so that seems like a missed opportunity right there. All tied up, and we're at the top of the fifth. On the ground, the third might be two. Over to second for one. Really the first double play. As a former player, watching five four three double plays brings back some adrenaline. It's such an exciting play, and it's always a great reminder of baseball being such a team sport. And next for the Angels, Nico Cavadas. And there's one thing on his mind this at bat, getting that first hit at the big league level. That misses the zone, and it's one to no. Cavadas goes six foot one, 25 years old, and they traded for him earlier this year. Left hand batter waits. Swings through that one for strike one. I think he was sitting off speed there. So a foul ball makes it one and two. Pretty impressive. We haven't seen that pitch from him much, but he's got a really good feel when he throws it. Swings and misses. Struck him out. Halfway through this one, still no score. And welcome back to the ballpark. Ready to go for the last half of the inning. Here's the shortstop at the play, Ernie Clement. And a pitch. That one in there across the letters. Well, he's been incredibly efficient this one. First pitch strike percentage over 70%. That's well above league average, and that's what's allowed him to pitch well up until this point. Riding to the plate. The shortstop takes the ball. Picks and misses. It's a strikeout. Definitely made him chase a little bit out of the zone right there. I don't think that's a strike if he takes it. Pretty textbook pitching. Get ahead in the count. Get the guy in the box on his heels and then force him to chase your pitch where he doesn't have much of a chance to do any damage. Hard on the ground to first. Kavadas steps on the bag. And a couple of quick outs. Now the white view. So up next for Toronto, Addison Barker. Swing and a ball lifted left field. Ward pulls it in on the run. Sixth inning coming up. Still nothing on the scoreboard. now in Toronto all right we go to the top half of inning number six and now the right fielder Joe Adele and he deals and a big swing and a miss you know these angels just aren't putting together very many good at bats in this one just one base runner to this point and it's not exactly early anymore they have guys in this lineup capable of sparking something but it just hasn't happened for them yet Still one and two count. Knocks that one away and we'll do it again. Well, he hasn't gotten the result yet, but it's got to feel pretty confident. Three foul balls in a row. He's right on this guy. The one two. Great. Looking for the K. 
I don't know about you, Chris, but that felt like a weird at bat right there. Didn't give much to hit until the final pitch, and he still got the backwards K. Yeah, not a single pitch was actually inside the strike zone, but he was being very aggressive in the box and fell behind in the count. Then they finally do challenge him, and he couldn't get the bat off his shoulder. Kind of a strange strikeout for sure, boo. So in now for the Angels, Mickey Moniak. Up and in, 1-0. Base is empty one away, and we're at the top half of the sixth. Well struck left field. That's back there. On the warning track, it holds it in. Man, Boog, I love watching an outfielder take on the wall and make that play, and it's a lot easier to watch from up here because that can be painful in the end. You know the wall's coming up on you quickly, so you have to maintain concentration and able to make that catch and hold on to it after contact. Lays out, but he can't squeeze it. Gets it there in time, though, and they come away with an out after a tricky start to the play. So another good inning for him on the mound. Six shutout innings now, and we still have no score. Now the left fielder rounded out to short in his first trip. The left fielder. Cueto back to work. And a good eye there. Well, these Blue Jays, they're not going to be happy with the at-bats they've been having so far. Just one base runner to this point, and it's not exactly early anymore. They've got players in this lineup capable of sparking something, but it just hasn't happened for them yet. is fouled off. The pitch. And Two now balls. it's even up. Got him looking. And he did not like the call. Really love the pitch sequence right there. I'm telling you what, pitcher and catcher on the, the same back. page right now. The catch, catch. And here's the catcher, Brian Servin. Struck out looking at his first at bat. Foul ball there. One down, base is empty. And that one fouled off. Two. Got him looking. Picks up strikeout number seven. The Back to the leadoff spot, the Blue Jays line up. And the batter is George Springer. One for two. That one's in there. It's 0-1. It really looks like these hitters have been in between with their timing today. Good fastball, excellent slider, but they've not been able to commit to one velocity and stay there. Two outs. They one tried ball. to get him to chase on a slider down and away. Nobody on here in the bottom of the sixth. That one missed. Fights it off, you'll see another. This guy's really battling up there as if his run is the game-winning run. I love his tenacity. 
Hacks and misses. It's a strikeout. One, two, three, go the Blue Jays. And we're still knotted at zero. Now it's the Angels' leadoff man, Taylor Ward. Changing speeds has this lineup completely off balance in this one. We've seen a lot of missed time swings, and it's been a challenge for these hitters to get their rhythm right. Swing and a foul straight back. Oh, one down. Way high. Ball, one strike. And one and two. One ball, two strikes. Right-hander kicks, deals, swings, throw it in, that's a strikeout. And next for L.A., Zach Neto. Went down looking on three pitches last time. Let's see if he can be a little more aggressive right here. Right side, hard hit. Steps on first for the out. Now back. Second base. Nolan, Nolan Shonowell, the next to hit for the Angels. He's been going after these guys consistently, and as a result, he's been able to keep his pitch count low, throwing the ball very well right now. Outside low, ball one. All tied up here at the top half of inning number seven. Fastball for a strike. He's gotten into a really good rhythm, set down seven in a row. He just wants to get the baseball and deliver it as quickly as possible. Keep the momentum going. Pitch misses there, and it's two and one. He swings and fouls one off. Foul ball, another 2-2 two -two upcoming. the throw and they get the out making it look easy at the keystone position definitely worth another look he'll get some high fives when he gets into the dugout now it's going to be line and pitch there's a strike I really like how he's been attacking hitters early in at bats. He's thrown strikes on a first pitch to over 70% of the guys he's faced in this one. Play down the line. This one hammered, but it's foul. The pitch. And that one missing low. One ball, two strikes, it down. He caught it behind his back. It's there, and that's a great play. Now, now third baseman. And now for the Jays, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. And that's outside, and that's ball one. Line of the pitch. And a foul ball. Hit hard on the ground is short. Fires across the diamond. And that quickly to away. First base Horowitz. And now the Toronto cleanup hitter, Spencer Horowitz. Ground ball right side. Pavadas oh. takes it to the bag, and the Blue Jays go down one, two, three. Oh. 
Anthony Rendon making his way to the plate. Gosman back to work. Line drive, and it's caught for the out. It's never fun going back to the dugout after hitting the line drive that finds a glove, but you will get some high fives. You know, when you make great contact, you feel like you've done everything right. But in this game of baseball, not everything is in your control. Logan Ohapi, the next to hit for the Angels. In the air out to center. That one gets down for a hit. So a man aboard now with one away. Dominant performance for him today, Boo. Just two hits allowed so far. No runs across either. And he's had an answer for just about every hitter he's faced. So I don't think this hit is going to knock him off his stride too much. Manager out of the dugout now. And it looks like we'll see a change on the mound. Kevin Gosman makes way. And as he heads off, we'll step aside for a minute. Back with the new pitcher after this break. They hand the ball over to a new arm, Ryan Yarbrough. And he's been so good against lefties. And now the first baseman, Nico Cavadas. front with the swing and that is strike one. Oh, and one your base runner you got to stay dialed in here look for anything in the dirt try your best to get into scoring position with the go ahead run at first and we're at the top of the eighth <laughs> going to now gets a piece it stays alive. Here's the 0-2. Keeps the at bat going with a foul ball. The pitch. And that's down and away. Way to lay off that pitch down. Foul ball left side. He'll see another. Five foul balls in this at bat so far. And these two are going head to head. You can see the crowd. They're starting to get into it a little bit more and more each pitch. Even though there hasn't been a ball in play yet. Kicks and deals. And a foul ball, he stays alive. Left hand hitter waits. And that one gets past the catcher. So a wild pitch allows the runner to advance. You know, sometimes it takes a reliever a little time to get comfortable with the mound out there, especially when they come in trying to be nasty with every pitch they throw. Not exactly what they were looking for when they called him in, though. We'll see if he can settle down. Man at second. Wouldn't okay. chase that time. Three, two. Battling here as he fouls it away. And now the lefty. And he walked him. That's a great at bat. He saw a lot of pitches and earned a walk. When you go that deep into it at bat, the hitter usually comes out on top. Two on, one out. And next for the okay. Angels, Joe Adele. Who's 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts.
Just missed. Well, this is a critical spot for both the pitcher and the hitter. You can learn a lot about a guy by how he handles these pressure situations. Two on, one out. And that one fouled off. a big second out. I'll tell you, this whole crowd will be fired up. They can get out of this and leave that go-ahead run stranded in scoring position. This is a big moment in this game. Angels making a move for a pinch hitter. Kevin Pillar. And this is a big at bat coming, boo. Definitely a little added pressure on him here. First off, bring it just misses. Ohapi at second. Cavadas on at first with two down. Laser could be extra bases. Runner around third. He scores and they have the lead. One nothing. Row cut off. Now to the plate. Here's the tag. They get him. And that's the inning. One run, a pair of hits, no errors, and one left on. Last half of the eighth coming up. It's the Angels one and the Jays nothing. So remaining in the game defensively, Kevin Pillar. He'll be out center now after pinch hitting. And now for the Jays, Ernie Clement. The wind of the pitch. Breaking ball through there for a strike. Cueto into his eighth inning of work singing. He's been good. Yeah, he's the type of guy that gets better as he gets deeper into the ball game. If you're going to get to him, you get to him early. They didn't do that today. We'll see what happens as this finishes. Next offering is in for a strike. Pitch count in great shape. It seems you might have a chance to finish it. Looking to get the tying run on base. Goes down looking. Pretty big strikeout right there to start this eighth inning. Down run. Any leadoff now base runner really Second makes this inning, inning a bit more interesting. But now this offense has to switch from possibly trying to manufacture a run to needing to run into something or just try to string multiple hits together to get a run across the plate. Jimenez up to bat next. Lays off for a ball. Trusted your hands, you let the ball travel, and you took the ball straight to it. That's great work right there. A chance now to even the score and maybe extend this game. Mickey move at second base. Entering is the pinch runner, Stuart Baroa. And next for Toronto, Addison Barger. That one off the mark, ball one. His fans, they are... Ready to cheer about something. So the tying run at second. And he hits a ground ball right side. And he handles it himself for the out. That's a huge defensive play in the late stages of the game. It might not be the most challenging we've seen today, but it needed to be made. That's helping your team. Here's the left fielder. And there's no doubt that they'll feed off the energy from this crowd, right? I mean, yeah, I'd say the intensity level has gone up a few notches for sure. Bounced up the middle. 
Gets it to first. That's the third out. Eight innings, eight zeros as the shutout continues here. It's the Angels one and the Jays nothing. Now, now into the ball game on defense, Stuart Barroa. He'll play Stewart. second. Barilla. So now out of the pen comes the right-hander, number 43. number 43. And he's had a struggle so far this year, as you can see the inflated ERA. Looking to bring that down a little bit right here. Well, one run game. Brandon Drury now at the plate. Brandon Drury. Here comes a pitch. That's ball, off the mark, cool. and that is ball one. Right-handed reliever, and that one sliced foul. Righty delivers. Inside that one inside. Ball. Two balls, two strikes. And another ball. Three and two now. Swing and a pop up in foul ground near the fence. Drops into the glove. One away. The left field of the three. Taylor Ward. Back to the top of the lineup. Now the left fielder, Taylor Ward. And first offering is fouled off. One run game here in the top of the ninth. That breaking ball is in for a strike, and quickly, it is nothing in two. Double-barreled action in the bullpen. Tommy Nance getting loose out there. Pop getting loose as well. One down, base is empty. Cuts out it and misses. That's a strikeout. Slider got him for strike three. Nice, okay. doubled up with the slider for that punch out. The one before just caught the zone, so as a hitter, you have to protect right there. Great pitch to just expand a little bit more. He got that chase he was looking for. That right there is good pitching. Up the middle, Clement. Tosses to first, and that's the third out. Bottom of the ninth coming up, and we'll see if he can complete the shutout after the break. Last chance for the home team. Here's the Toronto catcher, Ryan Servin. What are you looking to do in these spots? You're down a run. You're leading off the inning. He's not a power hitter, a guy that's looking to tie it up with one swing. So he's going to take and get into this at bat and try to get deep into the bat, ultimately, however he can, get to first base. One up, one down. Almost a loud start to the inning on that first pitch, man. He's going to want that one back, no doubt. Here's George Springer. One for three. I mean, his pitch efficiency, ability to get ahead in the count, at times pitch to contact, let the defense work behind him. That's why he's still in the game here in the ninth inning. And fouled off. You just don't see it that much anymore, a guy being this efficient and getting this deep into the game. I wonder if he's going to be able to close it out. It's just something about that ninth inning. But being at under 100 pitches, he's still got plenty of fuel left in the tank. Good eye right there. Pitch in for a strike, two and two. Well, I'm impressed with that challenge pitch right there. Even with this slim lead, this guy's not afraid to go right after these hitters. 
That ball is foul, and the pressure is building. Definitely got the hitter conscious of the pitch inside. Really think the outer half is open. Hard ground ball, base down. And the tying run is on base here in the bottom of the ninth. A perfect example right there. That plate discipline, it pays off. The deeper he gets into a count, the more comfortable he becomes, and he usually wins the battle. Here comes the skipper, and we're going to see a pitching change in this spot. Johnny Cueto departs, and he leaves in a one-run game. New pitcher coming on. We'll be back in a minute. They bring a young arm out of the bullpen in this spot. And Joyce. I think closer has to be one of the toughest jobs in baseball. And we see a pretty high turnover rate because of it. Every outing seems to be high pressure, this one included. We'll see if he can wrap up the win and get himself a save. So up next for Toronto, Dalton Varsho. 0 for 3 with two ground outs and a strikeout. Swing a high fly ball, deep left field. That's bad. is the kind of thing you dream about growing up. You're in the backyard, you're creating the most pressure-packed scenario, and what do you do? You come through with the big swing. Well, he was living a childhood moment right there. Nice swing of the bat, nice win for the team. And your final score here today, 2-1. For Chris Singleton and our entire outstanding crew here at MLB The Show, I'm John Chambi saying so long.